and welcome to the SWBN News Watch, where we report global events from a Christian perspective. I am Chimila Chike. Thanks for joining us today. Now let's have a look at some of the major stories you need to hear about. The Monistar News reported that a Christian in eastern Uganda died on July 10th from head injuries sustained in an attack by Muslim extremists. The disease victim, Robert Bunge, had accompanied 25-year-old assistant pastor Ambrose Mogisha of Elim Pentecostal Church to an open-air debate about Christianity and Islam in Serumola village, Kiankwanzi district on July 6, when he was brutally injured on his way back and eventually died. Mogisha, who survived the brutal attack, told Morning Star News how the conversion of eight Muslims, including two women, angered the Muslims, but they could not attack them while they were at uh, Sirimola village because they had tight security from the police. However, as he and Buenja returned, Muslims from Sirimola village ambushed them while they were crossing a swamp. According to Mogisha's account, they saw men dressed in Islamic attire coming from the bush in different directions and shouting Allah Akbar, which is translated to mean God is greater. As the events unfolded, the assailants spared the Quran which they had in their possession and burnt their Bibles and books. They went on to beat the two Christians with sticks. Mogisha ended up with the cut on his head but was rescued after he managed to jump into nearby water and swim across to the other side. Buenje wasn't as lucky. The assailants continued assaulting Buenje before they fled, leaving him with deep head injuries. Passersby took both wounded Christians to a nearby clinic for first aid and then later to a hospital in Kiboka where Buenje succumbed to the full extent of his injuries. Another pastor who came to visit Dua, the hospital, told Monistar News that they reported the incident to the Kiboka Central Police Station. One of the assailants identified as Kasamba has been arrested and charged with attempted murder. The police are mounting serious searches for the other attackers at the time of this report. Meanwhile, the two Christians who were victims of Islamic brutalities were missionaries sent to establish a church in Serimola village. Moving on, Radio Free Asia has reported that Chinese authorities forcibly demolished a Catholic underground church in Luanchang, Hebei. Dong Baolu, the bishop of the local underground church, told news sources that the demolished meeting point was just a simple shed that they used since they were not willing to join the Catholic Patriotic Association and be controlled by the Communist Party. Recall that Chinese authorities passed the administrative measures for religious clerics last year, which requires religious clerics to file with the religious department according to the filing format set by China's State Administration for Religious Affairs. Narrating the event, Baolu said that in Zhengding Diocese, the underground Catholic church where he is located, local priests are being, are being asked by the authorities to join the official Catholic Patriotic Association. Over 100 priests have joined the association and he is the only one left. He further went on to add that during the first demolition process, no church members were taken away. Moreover, he believes that the reason why the local church is facing this situation is because of the agreement signed between China and the Vatican. Baolu explained that the China-Vatican agreement supports the official Catholic Patriotic Association, but not the Catholic underground church. Still in this story, Radio Free Asia went on to report that the China-Vatican agreement requires China to recognize the Pope's final decision on Chinese bishops while the Vatican recognizes bishops appointed by China, including those who have been excommunicated. Meanwhile, the relevant details of this agreement have not been disclosed, but according to Radio Free Asia, it has been opposed by many religious figures who believe that it will intensify religious persecution by the Chinese authorities. Adding to that, CBN News explained that Catholic churches, like all houses of worship in the country, are only allowed to operate in China if they are registered with the communist government and under its control. There are five controlling bodies in China. We, they have the uh, Buddhist Association of China, the Chinese Taoist uh, Association, the Islamic Association of China, the Protestant Three Self Patriotic Movement, and the Chinese Patriotic uh, Catholic Association. CBN is further explained that the CCP has exhibited quite an intense grip on believers, even to the point of rewriting scripture through the lens of communism. A 
Away from that, in Nigeria, local banks have begun to shut down bank accounts belonging to unregistered associations and societies, including churches. This was in response to a directive from the Central Bank of Nigeria. According to the directive, any association, club, town union, age grade, foundation or church account affected must register with the Corporate Affairs Commission, CAC, and get a CAC certificate to enable them to run their accounts. At the time of this report, the Apex Bank was yet to disclose the reason behind this very move. However, in 2018, when a similar matter came up, the Church Times Nigeria reported that a lawyer and legal advisor at the Lagos State Chapter of Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, Barrister Tommy Vincent, said it was not compulsory for churches to register with the Corporate Affairs Commission, pointing out that if a church surrenders itself to the Commission, it must be ready to abide by all the dictates of the Commission. Vincent went on to say that pastors should understand that they are no longer the owner of the church as it were the moment they are registered with the CAC. In his very words, and I quote, The moment you are registered, you are no longer the owner of the ministry. The church is subject to the laws governing charity organizations. It is wrong for pastors to even think that the government is victimizing the church because there are no separate laws for the church. It is the same law that governs non-governmental organizations that govern the church. So, if the church is a registered entity, it must comply with all the laws of a registered entity. He also said that registered entities are expected to, to submit annual reports of their activities to the CEC and also pay tax if the church is doing extra church activities like uh, school businesses, among others. Still in Nigeria, a U.S.-based NGO has donated relief materials to victims of the Gama Headsman Massacre. The founder and chief executive of officer of Redeem Widows and Orphan Foundation, a non-governmental organization based in New York City, United States of America, Pastor William P.B. Devlin was in Nigeria to distribute relief materials to victims of the Gama Headsman deadly attack. The distribution took place at the St. Paul Catholic Church of Tonkong in Ado local government area where most of the internally displaced persons, IDPs, are temporarily camping. The charity was done in partnership with barrister Imano Ogebe, the managing partner of the U.S. Nigeria Law Group based in Washington, D.C. Recall that suspected Fulani headsman in the early hours of Sunday, 12th June 2022, attacked the Gama community in Adomoga, Oku local government area of Benue State, where more than 30 lives and properties worth millions of naira were destroyed. Speaking shortly before the commencement of the humanitarian exercise, Pastor William condemned the provoked terrorist attack on the Gama community, admonishing the displaced victims to hold up to God for the quick end of their travails as Christians. The missionary volunteer said his primary priority is to rehabilitate and bring suckers to victims of war and religious persecution through the gospel of Jesus Christ in war-ravaged and religious intolerant countries in the Middle East, Africa, and some European countries. He thanked uh, the executive governor of Benue State, Samuel Autumn, for providing the enabling environment which made the trip a successful one. We have more updates after this short break. Stay with us. Come on, Jada, Allah. Say 
Welcome back. The International Christian Concern, ICC, has reported that Christians in Iran continue to face significant challenges to their right to freedom of religion or belief. This was confirmed in a recent report from the United States Commission on International Religious Freedom, UC, USCIRF. In part of the government's ongoing efforts to stifle religious freedom, USCIRF found that Iranian authorities routinely spread misinformation to promote false narratives and justify their poor treatment of religious minorities. Among those targeted are Christian converts, often at the excuse of national security concerns and other arbitrary accusations. According to the report, USCIRF found that Iran's misinformation campaign against Christian converts has persistently used vague national security accusations. These baseless claims are primarily produced through Iran's state-controlled media outlets, which are heavily regulated to ensure that all content aligns with the government's interpretation of Jafri Shia Islam. By targeting Christians through this propaganda campaign, Iranian authorities are attempting to shape public opinion in a way that favors the government's mistreatment of religious minorities. The report also found that the Iranian government uses fabricated claims of national security as grounds for persecuting Christians and other religious minorities. In 2021, more than 120 Christian converts were arrested, detained, or imprisoned for their faith. Stay with us. Meanwhile, the Egyptian Initiative for Personal Rights, EIPR, warned that a Yemeni Christian is in immediate and severe danger due to his impending deportation by the Egyptian government. The Yemeni Christian Abdul Baki Saeed Abdul recently announced his conversion to Christianity on social media, recounting how it took place in 2012. 13 before he fled from Yemen to Egypt. After he and his family converted, Abdul's wife was murdered and he was nearly murdered too. Fortunately, he survived and acquired an asylum application registration card from the Office of the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, UNHCR, in 2015. He also received a card from the UNHCR in 2020, which he still possesses. EIPR has sounded the alarm that, despite the danger of facing Abdul in Yemen and his possession of an asylum card from the UNHCR, the Egyptian government is threatening him with, with uh, deportation. Egyptian authorities arrested Abdul on December 15, 2021, soon after he announced his conversion to Christianity on social media. They searched his home, seized his three laptops, and charged him with joining a terrorist group with knowledge of its purposes and contempt of the Islamic religion. He currently sits in pretrial detention, awaiting the adjudication of his Supreme State Security case. <music> And that will be all for this edition of the SWBN is Watch. Thank you so much for staying with us. Don't forget to lift up these burdens before the Lord. We trust that he will surely come and save us. Till we meet next Thursday, 9 p.m. I remain Chimilachike. God bless you.